What is good guys, it's Ray J back with another video and in this one I want to break down what's going on with Tesla spying video, the QQQ and a couple of other stickers. I want to break down what's happening with the overall market thus far while we got this very aggressive sell off today after what some Fed speakers said and how things may end up panning out for tomorrow. But before I break the double information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am personally not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble and deposit $500 into the account, you're guaranteed 20 free stocks. If you deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75 free stocks. And the offer ends very, very soon in just a couple of weeks. Anyways, for the markets, we saw some crazy, crazy volatility for today. Let's do a quick recap before I break down the charts and everything. So what happened was we got some data in the morning today. We got the jobs numbers that came out for initial jobless claims. When the data came out, we saw SPY pump. The market was pumping. We saw Tesla pumping too, alongside other pieces of news, which helped it which involved like elon musk in india and the list goes on and then also you know all this good stuff was coming out all this good news market was pumping very very nicely off this data also the exports and imports helped the market so initially the market was pumping spy was approaching the all-time high reaching just under 524 then all of a sudden we started to sell off a bit as we had some bill auctions then we had a bunch of fed speakers and that's what changed everything so Kashkari from the Fed came out and he said it's possible that the Fed won't cut this year if inflation stalls and they use this as a reason to cause the market to drop. Now, just know that uh, I wouldn't solely say that the market had to crash because of data like this or any claims by Kashkari. I think that these market makers were trying to bring the market down, trading the market and trying to do what was necessary to try to screw over as many of those option holders as possible, especially because of the amount of call buying we were getting on the zero day to expiration basis. So I think that these zero day to expiration options are causing a lot of volatility. And this is leading to uh, a lot of changes in the markets, squeezes to the upside and the downside. And I think that that's one of the main reasons why we saw this volatility. But on top of this, they use this as a very important reason uh, to move the markets and they could do the same thing again tomorrow. So why did the market sell off? The logic is basically that the Fed is saying they may not have to cut this year if we keep seeing high inflationary signals. Remember that crude oil is going up. Gas prices are going up in America. When oil tends to go up, this tends to be highly correlated with CPI. And there's a very good chance that we could see higher prices again. And on top of that, uh, the manufacturing numbers that came out from the uh, ISM report, not to mention the PMI reports, are all showing some strength in a way where manufacturing prices are going up. And that could lead to big changes right here. So it's very important to pay attention to all of this. Uh, that is why the market kind of sold off the way it did because of fears of high inflation and that the Fed may not cut this year. Now, that's that's like the logic behind it. It's also because of these institutions in the background looking at the options chain, realizing they wanted to just hurt as many of these option holders as possible. We saw a lot of call buying today. The majority of positions were actually calls or, or almost the majority were calls, at least at one point until the very end. And then with all the call buying that happened, they ended up going after the calls and they, they pushed everything out of the money. And that led to some interesting volatility. Now, for tomorrow, SPY has a different options chain. We have 518 being max pain. We have over, uh, I would say, very close to about 600,000 calls expiring. And we have a little bit over 800,000 of the puts expiring. So the majority of positions are in puts this time. Will the market makers cause a little rebound because of that? Or are they going to do something different? I do anticipate a little rebound to come uh, as a result of this. But we're going to have to see if the move lasts as we have something else affecting us. Now, right now, the market is neutral. We were super greedy. Now we're back to neutral. Are we about to get back to fear if the market keeps selling off? We'll just have to wait and see. But things are shifting in the markets right now. The puts and call positioning is now going back up a little bit. We're starting to see more put buying overall. And this could shift more upwards. If this keeps shifting upwards, that could be a little bearish. The VIX is starting to break out as well. If the VIX keeps going like this, this would be a bearish signal. The market is starting to turn a bit more in favor of bears. However, just because that is the case, it doesn't mean that we're about to crash or about to see a massive pullback because when we dropped this hard this fast, SPY dropped almost uh, 11 points in a single day, which is insane. So we, we tend to see a little rebounds when this happens. We want to see a little, uh, you know, a little attempt for the market to rebound first, kind of catch itself before we continue to make any other moves like this. So that's what's most likely going to happen for tomorrow. It's going to be Friday, April 5th, 2024. Okay, tomorrow, an hour before the market opens, 
almost all the data we're interested in is, in is going to be coming out. We have the unemployment numbers coming out, manufacturing payrolls, governmental payrolls. But the most important thing is going to be the unemployment rate. It's also coming out right here. Non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate are going to be the two most important pieces of data. We'll see what this leads to. Do we see another increase in un unemployment or does it end up going back down? We'll just have to wait and see. This is going to be very key for tomorrow morning. We'll see what the big reaction happens to be. And then after all the unemployment numbers come out, at 9.15 a.m., we have Barkin giving a speech. Then we have Bowman giving a speech and a bunch of Fed speakers. So the Fed speakers could cause more volatility, so just be a little bit careful. My guts does tell me the market may start off on a strong note, attempt to rebound a bit, and then later on during the day, we could slow down if the Fed speakers start to say more hawkish things. Okay, so for SPY, I have my Fibonacci retracement tool right over here. As you guys can see, this is looking very, very interesting as we have SPY uh, currently at this 512 area, assuming the bottom is in, if the bottom truly is in at 512.5, SPY could continue to push up towards 515 or 0.236 retracement area and make our way back up towards this previous uh, support becoming resistance right here. Let me actually show you on the chart. So right here, what I noticed is that the 0.382 retracement aligns with the previous support becoming resistance, right? And we could actually redraw a line right there. But basically right here at this 516.5 zone around there, it's 516.8. We have this resistance to be watching for and we'll have to see how things go. We might see a little rebound right over there and then we'll see if Spike gets a negative reaction or not. If we break through this, watch this thing go all the way up to the 0.5 at 518. And we have the 0.618 retracement at 519.5, somewhere near the golden pocket it could end up going to if we break past 516.8 excuse me 516.8 so i see potential for this to push up to the 516 area at least temporarily maybe go a little bit higher but then the issue is once we hit this key fib retracement area we have uh in my opinion more reactions to be coming maybe the data causes a bit of a balance temporarily but then the fed speakers come back and i don't know what they're going to say and that's why you want to be a little bit careful if they cause some negative sentiments and the market kind of like pushes up to 516.8 or even 518 spy could still kind of pop and then reject back down and start sinking back down to 515 and start downtrending more if they don't cause much to happen spy could hover around here and kind of close very close to where we are for a little green day but it all depends on the fed speakers later on and also what the market makers try to do with the options chain but let me just say i'm anticipating a little rebound and then we'll have to see what happens with the fed speakers but watch for that going into tomorrow on spy it's going to be pivotal now, on top of all of this, let me mention that we also have stocks like Tesla. Tesla took a bit of a hit. Uh, it basically pumps. And I was talking about a pump on Tesla yesterday. That did happen. And then we got a big rejection. Tesla was kind of delayed. It was actually holding up very nicely. It also closed kind of green today, so it's showing some strength. Tomorrow, we're going to be looking for a little retest of the 200 EMA. I think it might make its way up to about 174 or so, 173.75. And then we, we're going to be looking to see if we get a rejection or not around that area to come back down. If we break through this, watch 175 or so, this imbalance up here before it comes back down. My gut tells me, and by the way, we have support at 170.5. If we lose this, watch 167.8 followed by 165. But let me clarify that for Tesla, it might push a little bit upwards at first, kind of balance when we open, get back to this 173.75 to 175 area. Then we could establish a lower high. I want to see if we make a higher high or a lower high relative to this high. We might make a lower high, then come back down for a little pop and drop like move. I find that that's to be very, very probable. On top of that, we have NVIDIA. NVIDIA got this big sell off all the way down towards about 858. We're still looking kind of weak on NVIDIA. Also, let me call out that we have this uh, head and shoulders like structure that's starting to play out very, very nicely. So this is looking a little bit weak on NVIDIA, looking at this head and shoulders. We're seeing some weakness. We're approaching some key support very close to this 850 area. So I could see it actually come down a little bit more in the pre-market. And then we could look for a little bounce. So NVIDIA, Either it, it bases right over here at 856, maybe that's the bottom, or it comes down to 850 and then tries to rebound a bit. If we do rebound on NVIDIA, we could be making our way back up to this imbalance. Very, very close to about 874. We could see a little pop back up there, then some uh, sideways price action, some, some, some shuffling, if anything. And watch and see if we get a big bounce up to 885, or if we get a rug pull thanks to the Fed. So look for a little rebound and see what happens once we hit this resistance right up here. The market makers are playing some dirty games and it's still affecting these other tickers. Now, the QQQ is in a very, very interesting place as well relative to SPY. I see something very interesting happening. So we have key support at 434, very strong support on the QQQ right there. If we lose that, that opens room for much lower levels. 
Then we have resistance at 436. If we break this, watch 438, then 440. We dropped really hard on the QQQ, and I think it's too hard and too fast. So I believe that we might actually see a little rebound attempt. Also note that uh, right here, we have 438 being a key level. So I think that that's going to act as an uh, as a magnet and i think that we're going to be looking for a retest of that if not 440 so i think it's going to be coming back up to 438 if not 440 kind of shuffle up here for a bit and then we'll see if the fed speakers help this eventually continue to push or if we get a big rug pull and we come back down but look for a little attempt to rebound first and we'll see how it goes from there that's very probable on the qqq i also want to add that the qqq is also bearish overall the trend has been down it's been slowly 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 downtrending uh, look for an attempt to rebound at first before it continues lower. I do believe there's more downside potential in the future. This has been very, very stationary as well, trading sideways for quite some time. But for the short term, I see an attempt to rebound coming. And then we're going to be watching to see where we end up forming our top. For Apple stock, unfortunately, Apple was trying to rebound too, and this thing ended up failing. I called out an inverse head and shoulders on Apple. We got the move. The move did come. We pushed all the way up to 172. But then the news came out, and Apple got a rug pull. All the way down to the 168 we went now it's trying to rebound a bit so i think we could get a retest of our 50 ema so i think 170 could be coming on apple we'll watch and see if this thing rejects or not so just be very very careful with that uh that is it for the main five i typically go over let's just talk about a couple more before i conclude this video so for palantir this thing was on fire yesterday even today was trying to push looking very very good and we got a big rejection thanks to the fed again so I would say that I'm going to be watching some key levels on this. I'm going to zoom out of our four hour time frame. And as you guys can see, it's been attempting to rebound a little bit. It's been making an attempt to grow. Uh, I would say that Palantir is going to likely retest our 200 EMA, uh, 22.76 and eventually 23.25. Look for a little rebound attempt and then a potential rejection after that for a move back down. But I see an attempt to get back up to the 20 EMA, at least at 23. It's very, very tight. So it's not really that fun to play around with. But I do see an attempt to get back up before it comes back down. So look for a push for at least 23. Uh, could go a little higher, but then watch resistance and see how it reacts. Uh, I saw the same thing happen on Supermicro. So Supermicro is basically on a bit of a downtrend, making lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. And when you zoom out of the chart, you can see that it's actually showing some weakness right over here. So from how I see things, I would say that the chart's looking a bit more bearish. We could get a back test of this resistance close to about 980, if not 1000. 980 to 1000 could be retested one more time. And then we could be looking for a big rejection and move back down later. So I'm going to be looking for a little rebound first before we continue lower. But the chart is still a bit more bearish. For Rivian... Rivian's on a bit of a downtrend, looking kind of weak, especially as it fell with Tesla and its deliveries. So I think that we could have potential to drop lower towards 10, could rebound a bit, retest 10.5, then come back down to 10. I see that as a strong possibility. For SoFi, with the news about the Fed potentially not giving us rate cuts, uh, you know, SoFi came down a bit. I would say that I see potential for it to pop right here. And eventually come back down lower. I, I do think the chart looks kind of bearish. And we can actually retest the 7.25 area again. So look for a move back down. May retest 7.4. Then come back down to about 7.2. So I see some weakness on that chart. AMD was trying to rebound. It was trying to. And I told you to watch the range. Okay. Had we broken the yellow line right here. If we'd broken the 50 EMA, we could have pushed higher. If we lost the red one, we would have dropped lower. Which one did we break? Well, look at the last couple of weeks. Right, it's been back and forth, back and forth price action. And then this time we lost the red 200 EMA. Once we lost this moving average, bam, we came all the way down to about 166. So a very, very big drop. Now, in my opinion, we're not at key support yet. We could have actually dropped a little bit lower uh, to the mid 160 area. It might attempt to rebound and come back up to about this resistance around 170 before it comes back down lower. So look for a retest of like 170 or so before it continues. But the trend is starting to turn a bit more bearish. For ARM, it was trying to rebound. It got a big rejection. Unfortunately, now it's showing some weakness. Might retest 123.62. Might try to come a little higher. But then we could get a rejection, come back down towards 121.5. For Coinbase, Coinbase is looking a bit more bearish. Let me call out that Coinbase also is at support right now. And we happen to have a head and shoulders like structure. Watch the support. If we get a rebound off this, we could attempt to bounce back up to about 
uh, the 250 area. So 250, 252 or so the 50 EMA. And then if we reject off this, we're going to start sinking back down lower to lower levels. If we lose the trend line, we're going to be sinking all the way down easily to two, uh, 235 or so. So the trend does look a bit more bearish either way. We have to see how it reacts to the trend line, do, though. Do we pop first and then drop? Or do we drop from here? Either way, I do see a drop coming. It's not looking that great. Amazon's barely holding the 180 area. Watch 179.63 as support. Might test this tomorrow. If we bounce off this, we're going to be looking for a move back up to about 182.5. If we lose 179.63, a bigger drop is coming all the way down to 178. So be careful on Amazon. We're at critical support. We'll see if we bounce or not. Meta was pushing all the way up into the 520s, almost hitting 530. Then we got a big rejection back down to about 511. Look for a retest of about 515. I think it's going to retest that. And if we reject, we come all the way down to about 503. If we break through that, we could push back up higher. So watch that test very, very carefully. For Microsoft, we're still range bound on Microsoft, looking kind of weak now. Look for a retest of about 421, 421.28. If we break through that, we could push higher into the 424 area. If you reject off 421.28, we could be coming back down lower. So watch and see. There's also a possible head and shoulders on Microsoft. This could be like a left shoulder here, a head and a right shoulder. We need confirmation. Might pop first, and if we end up dropping, if we ultimately lose like 415, I could see a big drop all the way down to 409 and even lower levels. So we'll just have to wait and see. For Google, looking a little bearish right now. And I was talking about this yesterday. I was anticipating a move to the downside. So it might retest 151.4, if not 154, uh, 151.4, I'm sorry, if not 152.5. And if we break that, then 154 could come. But if we reject off 152, look for a move even lower. Chart is kind of churning, so look for a back test and a move down. 148 is a real possibility. For the VIX, I think that the VIX is attempting to push higher. I was saying yesterday that this thing is either going to come down, fill this gap, or it's about to bounce and break out. I wasn't sure. It was showing some weakness, but this time it got a big breakout thanks to the Fed. And this was very sudden. So we'll have to see, excuse me, if the VIX keeps pushing higher or if this thing gets a rejection from here. We're not really at some tight resistance right now on the VIX. If we got closer to like 18, I would say that we're at resistance. We're not really there right now. So just be careful on the VIX. Let's see if this thing comes back down to retest 15.13. I could see that actually happen before it tries to bounce higher or if anything, <laughs> excuse me, Excuse me, guys, if anything changes moving forward. So that's going to be very important. We also have the dollar index. The dollar is starting to decline a bit, uh, but it's been declining. And now we're trying to rebound off our 200 EMA. We're going to likely retest 104.35. If we reject off that, we're going to be coming back down to 103.9. If, if it gets a rejection, this is bullish for the markets. If it breaks through 104.3, uh, this thing's going to start pushing higher and that's going to be bearish for the markets. So if it breaks this resistance, it starts pushing higher, that's bearish for the stock market. If it pushes to resistance and rejects, that's going to be bullish for the market. Hasn't made the move yet, so watch for that tomorrow. But as of right now, that's what I'm seeing. So in my opinion, I think the market drops too hard too fast. I think that the move is kind of exaggerated because it wasn't really a surprise for me. It shouldn't have been much of a surprise for you guys either. I did talk about how, in my opinion, the Fed... Uh, isn't guaranteed to be cutting rates that quickly. And there's a little bit too much talk about that. Uh, you know, the, the cuts, it, it may take them a while until we get any sort of cut. It could take them many months. So there is a gap down here on the four hour. I think SPY might rebound first if we are going to come down to fill that gap. Or, you know, if, if bad news comes in and starts sinking, it's very unlikely it just continues crashing from here unless something severe happens. My guts tells me it might rebound first, retest resistance, and then we might see a move back down later on at the end of the day tomorrow, or it might not happen. We'll have to wait and see. For now, just look for the rebound, watch resistance, and we'll see how it goes, and then we'll continue from there. But with that being said, thank you all so much for listening. I hope you guys have an absolutely incredible rest of the day. I'll see you guys very soon tomorrow morning for the next update. I'm going to break down some very important uh, unemployment numbers, so make sure you're ready for that. Tomorrow morning before the market opens, we have all this data coming out for unemployment, non-farm payrolls. So get ready, and we'll see how things go. Anyways, thank you for listening again. Have a great day and peace out.